Hey, thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, Mr. Arthur. You testified that the, uh, the Biden administration's claim that the southwest border uh, is safe, orderly, and humane, the way you describe it, uh, is not accurate. Can you give us some examples or why you feel that way? Why you would not describe it as safe, orderly, and, and, and humane? Mr. Chairman, uh, with respect to safety, uh, we've seen the number of migrant deaths spike. Uh, a couple of years ago, actually I think in 2022, we had 835 bodies found along the southwest border. Anybody who goes... Say that uh, again, because I, I want a lot of people to know that, including the press. Uh, how many people die just trying to come here? So we know that we found 835 bodies on our on, side of the border. On our side of the border, we'll never know how many people have died on the Mexican side of the border. There are UN estimates about things like that. But anybody who has ever gone into the wilds of the Sonoran Desert or into South Texas knows uh, that it's not uncommon for individuals to find corpses years after the fact uh, in the brush. People simply get lost, they fall into distress, they die. With respect to orderly. Uh, you know, we've seen a uh, diminishment for a couple of months after the Biden administration implemented some of its new ideas, but that uh, is spiked up. Uh, preliminary reports indicate that 130,000 people entered the United States illegally. Anybody who goes to the southwest border and, you know, looks at the crossers know there's nothing orderly about it. There's nothing legal about it. Um, it's sort of odd that this passes without notice. Many people will say, oh, you know, people who come through the ports are doing it the right way. It's not. We changed the law, you'd rather change the law back in 1996 to make, uh, to change the law so that individuals who come illegally through the ports and individuals who cross the border illegally are treated exactly the same in the law. There's nothing legal about this. And respectfully, sir, as a former congressional staffer and as a lawyer, it's offensive to me to hear people talk about the law and misstate the law in that manner. Okay, next question. Did you say before a third of the women who make the trek here wind up being molested? Doctors Without Borders did a report back in 2017, I think it was, in which they indicated, I think the actual uh, percentage was 31%, I said nearly a third of all of them. A significant number of men are sexually molested on the way to the United States, and a not insignificant uh, percentage are actually shot on their way to the United States. Okay. Now, sometimes this jargon, people here in the audience might not, not know what you mean. You have a graph in your testimony talking about the number of gotaways who came here. I want you to explain briefly what the difference between a gotaway is and somebody who turns himself at the border, and then confirm if what this says is accurate. It looks like until the Biden administration took over the number of gotaways, that is to say people who the Border Patrol did not touch and just came in here, Looks like it was around 120,000, and now, in the most recent year in which you have full data, it's over 600,000. So we've gone up by a factor of five to one on the type of people we're not even touching. Is that accurate? I'm reading that right? You are reading that correctly, and the definition of Godaway actually appears in the uh, National Defense Authorization Act of 2017. It's now codified at 6 U.S.C. Uh, 223 for individuals that uh, CBP knows have entered the United States illegally but not been apprehended. Uh, more than a half million in the last two years, almost 600,000 in FY 2022. Okay. Sheriff Daniels, you said something that kind of struck me. Um, the uh, the people that, you know, you have jails, obviously, sheriff's size, have to run the local jail. Do, does this uh, uh, flow of people coming across the southern border, does this affect uh, the amount of money you've got to spend on jail? Oh, it does. If you look at just in the first five months of this calendar year, 683 people were booked in my jail for border-related offenses. Uh, that 683, 621 were felony. Cochise County Attorney's Office has six felony attorneys to include the county attorney himself. Uh, they have record number uh, prosecutions going on. I, I commend our county attorney, but that enhances our jail time, it enhances the prosecution time and investigation time. So it's a big burden on us. I, I, I want to ask you that many felons. You know, one of the things we hear when I get around my district, sometimes people say, oh, these are all such wonderful people. They'd never break the law, blah, blah, blah. Uh, do you find that true that they would never break the law? 
Well, let me, let me uh, summarize by saying this, Mr. Chairman, is what we see in Cochise County as part of the Tucson sector is fight and flight. For the most part, we lead the nation in the Tucson sector for gotaways. These are people that are aggravated deportees, whether based on criminal records um, of some sort or countries of interest that are being uh, smuggled by the criminal cartels through our county, uh, which places my law enforcement and my citizens at risk. That's why we prioritized our efforts to secure the border along with our border pro partners and keep our community safe. Okay, just one other question before I let you go. Um, one of the things I always wonder about is um, given, given the severity of the crimes you're, you're describing now, have things changed over the last five years? Can you tell me how you, 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 view, you view the world today compared to if we had this hearing five years ago? Well, four years ago I was bragging during presentations around the country to include my own state and my own community that we had collectively made Cochise County one of the safest places on the uh, southwest border. The cartels did not want to play in our backyard because we were ready for them collectively. I can't say that honestly to my citizens today or those when I present. We've seen the, what I call the new normal of border, and that is the fact that crime is rampant as a result of border um, crime all the way up to murder, and we've lost citizens in this county, and we've lost people in this county that have died at the hand of the cartels who don't care. Uh, I do care. Okay, uh, now so you understand how this normally works. Normally each congressman up here gets uh, five minutes to question. I'm gonna call on uh, Congressman Biggs in a second. But since I see we have no Democrats here, we're gonna give everybody two chances to ask five minutes of questions. Okay, uh, 